Hello everyone, Pally Tip here. Welcome back to Subnautica. First off, I want to say I'm sorry if the last episode was a little too loud. Part of formatting my game meant I lost a lot of my audio settings. And I have a mixer, so what I hear is totally different from what you guys hear. I can have my game loud as fuck or completely turn the volume off independently from what the stream hears, which is kind of nice. Uh, also, whoo, the hits keep coming. I recorded an episode without hitting record, or at least part of an episode before I noticed. So welcome, everybody, <laughs> to Subnautica. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you guys for the support on the stream so far. The base is looking great. And I want to give you guys a tour. Just as enthusiastically as I did the first time. <laughs> So this is our vehicle bay. On top, we have a few solar panels. I still need to build some more. We don't have power all throughout the night, but I'm trying to address that uh, with something else. So while the sun is out, these solar panels are working great. They're keeping everything functioning inside of the base. No problem. Look at this cool docking thing we can do. Watch this. Welcome aboard, Captain. Thank you. This is our vehicle bay. We installed a C, or it's not a CMOTH, but a vehicle console. And I can adjust the colors of our vehicle now. You see the seat changing? Uh, the base color, we can change all this. I think that's cool as fuck. That's cool as fuck, dude. I kind of want to try to match the red of my car, but I, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. Uh, really excited about this because we could change the name of the Seamoth. I was sitting here trying to think of a good name. Uh, I decided it might be more fun to let you guys name it. Obviously not anything inappropriate and not anything against Twitch TOS. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you, you know, most liked comment gets to name the Seamoth. Huh? Uh, inside the base, we do have a fabricator right here. It's because I'm still using these fish outside to make food. So whenever we get hungry, we drop down there and fill our bellies. Uh, if we look around the interior, these are our two reinforced walls. I turned this first room into a storage center, helps helping me stay organized. We have a beautiful view at the observatory. Wow. Actually, just stunning. This is my favorite part of the base. I, I intend on growing something here. I don't know what. Uh, this is kind of a little off center, so I do need to replace that. I wanted to mimic the observatory room that we saw on the island over there. And I thought this would be a great way of doing that. Uh, I've been making a lot of trips back and forth between the island in our base because I'm setting up our own grow areas in here. Oh, they finally grew! Nice! So a shit ton of potatoes because potatoes are good for us, I think. And then I have these lantern trees. They produce a ton of fruit. And I was going to get a bioreactor set up. I have this thing that filters out the salt and salt water and gives us regular water. Isn't that nice? Um, but there is an important new recipe I got to show you guys. That's how we were able to make that. So this building required aerogel, light porous dry gel with a high heat insulation. That's what was needed to make this thing over here. And you make it with rubies and this stuff called gel sacks. Both of these items are found by that life pod that we keep going back to. It's that marker right there, the one we put by the wreckage, uh, that's very, very close to that first island that we ventured over to. Uh, so I've been gathering that stuff and making some more advanced things with it. I wanted to see if I could get a bioreactor ready, just so, like, look at our power right now. It's 9, 8, 7 out of 450. That's because the sun isn't up. <laughs> so our solar power can't keep up with our demands. So it just needs a wiring kit and lubricant. Oh, I thought it needed that. Maybe I was thinking about making another water filtration machine. This thing is good, but it's really, really slow. Um, 
Like, I'm definitely glad I have it. It is giving us free water, but uh, it's not at an impressive speed. I think that's what I was thinking. Sorry, I got a little confused. So I need the aerogel to make another water filtration system, and we need the bioreactor to power the fucking thing at night because those solar power panels are just not up to snuff so far. Oh, they're almost fully grown. Oh, and the plan with the lantern tree is this bears a shit ton of fruit, like a ton. One tree on that island had like, it looked like 50 fruit on it or something. So I was just going to take whatever came off of this and throw it into the bioreactor. That, that was my plan. Oh, an advanced wiring kit requires a computer chip as well. Computer chips are go wow this is getting expensive to make everything computer chips are table coral copper wire and gold okay i'm gonna get to work then i'll give you guys the rest of the base tour there's still more to see i'm feeling a little scatterbrained today because i already said some of this stuff and now i can't remember what i said so here's what i'm doing if we want to add that biomass reactor, it looks like it's going to take up a pretty significant portion of a room, which means we're going to have to move some stuff. Maybe it's worth, maybe it's not. If I want to add the water filtration system, which I do, that's why I went out and got that extra aerogel, we're going to have to move some more stuff around as well, because it looks like that'll only go directly up against one of these side walls. So if we want to get rid of this grow bed, we can. And we're going to get rid of this one really fast, too. Luckily for us, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. We can attach another water filtration system over here. So we have two things of water producing all the time. We also have salt that we can use to make other water with. We can probably squeeze another grow bed in here, I hope. That's an exterior one. We need the interior one. Perfect. And in order to start this grow bed, all we need to do is grab a few potatoes from here and transfer them over. And by transfer them over, I mean accidentally eat one. But one of the beautiful things about this is each potato generates more seeds than we need to grow a new potato stock. So we just collected like six or something from this replanted one and then moved four over to this side to keep it growing now we did just increase our power usage so if i wanted to put a biomass generator down this room is getting really cluttered i think it can only go in the middle and i'm not sure if it's mad at me for having too much stuff nearby or not having the right materials i'm not sure why that won't fit but i'm, I'm gonna figure it out and by figure it out, I guess I mean figure it out later because I'm actually out of silver at the moment for wiring kits. One thing we can do in the meantime is add even more electricity demand from this place by installing a, come on, you had a sweet spot. Bring it back. Where was it? Ooh, that looks ugly. Oh no, can you go anywhere else? This is a power cell charger which I guess is going right there. I did have a nice spot saved for it, hoping it would like it, but that's okay. We have a battery charger over here so we can get our fully charged batteries. Uh, like our habitat builder, almost completely empty. We can just swap out to a fully charged battery and then deposit one of these super weak batteries and it'll charge it back up. And I can do that for each piece of equipment that I have, right? So that battery was still fine, but might as well charge it up. So we're very self-sufficient for some of our electronics now, which is really nice because scrounging for batteries was a little bit on the difficult side until we went to the Aurora and they just gave us a million of them. Now we're gonna be able to continuously use all of those. I just put myself in a stasis field. And same thing with power cells. I have one here that is at 12%. Plug it in. And it's going to start charging those bad boys up. So let me give you the rest of the tour. You've already seen our grow room a little bit. Obviously, we're still making some changes in here. Um, the lockers on the side are just for holding whatever this machine produces. And probably, I mean, I don't really think there's a point of holding excess food because it does go bad in this game. 
but this is like our food and water generation area. Over here, we have our bedroom. Obviously, I made a bed. We can skip some nighttime stuff now, which I'm so happy about. Our charging station right next to that. Uh, we have a nice desk over here with the hat and the arcade toy that we found over in the Aurora and a coffee machine. Does it actually make coffee? I don't know. Uh, new radio, new fabricator. We also have these first aid fabricators. And the good thing about this is they just keep making them. So every time these are done, <gasps> oh, real Italian espresso diluted with tasteless American waters. <laughs> I would love some coffee. Um, the storage room has sections for a lot of just stuff I pick off, off, off the ground. So quartz, copper, gold, diamonds, lead, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm using these lockers in the middle for our main storage. You saw that area up there. And uh, the most important place of all is right next to my bed. We built an aquarium for hoopfish. It's just for hoopfish. So he could swim around in there and, and just be happy. And of course, the keep composter right behind him, keeping him motivated. I have equipment lockers just above my bed. So if I'm going out on a mission and I know I'm going to need something in particular or not need something in particular, I can throw it into storage. And you know when I said this was only for Hoopfish? I brought his friend Reginald over to see him. Ah! So obviously there's still some things we need to do in here, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. Uh, I would like to build a scanner room on the side of this just to help me find some materials. We don't quite have all of the necessary things for a scanner room though. We haven't found enough components just out in the world that we've scanned so far. One of the best things about this vehicle bay is it allows you to add mods to your vehicles. So we have a Seamoth depth module. We can go 300 meters down now because of that upgrade oh black interior looks sick dude um i do have some ideas on where to look for that scanner stuff uh, i'm gonna start by heading this way oh i kind of want to explore the jelly biome a little bit more the one that's down there, the one with the long boys. Cause uh we can go we can actually venture into the depths of that a little bit more now. That's for another time. So, uh I wanted to bring my laser cutter to crash sites like this that we haven't been able to access so far. We have been inside of this one. But I was just gonna kinda stick to this red this red area because I know there's some crash sites around here and uh, just try to work my way around like stay close to the shallows just kind of go in a circle around the shallows and see if we can find any more crash sites like this uh, I would cut this door open but we've already been inside through that hole and there was nothing too much in there and I don't think I missed anything on the outside so let's keep moving I have so much storage now that it's actually worth it for me to scan these things that only give me titanium again. Because I actually have a place to put all of this titanium, which feels kind of nice. Now, I believe we already have one of these scan room fragments. And I want to say it was found in this red grass, which is why I'm kind of sticking to it and scavenging around here. Although, if it came off of the ship, Hold on, what do we have here? It looks like another sea moth fragment. If it, you know, if it fell off of the Aurora when the Aurora was crash landing, it probably makes sense to stay in line with the ship's trajectory a little bit. We're a little off from that right now, but I mean, we're still finding some stuff. So many laser cutters. Makes me wonder how it took me so long to actually find the laser cutter. There's just boxes everywhere with it in it. Detecting increased foreign bacteria levels in the water. Performing a self Foreign bacteria levels. Oh, is this one of the big infection spots? Did you see that? I 
heard it. I heard it and I saw it. Uh, I still hear it. Let's turn the lights off. It was just that way, right? Why did the stasis field not stop the biters? So... Oh, fuck. Where am I right now? So we are west of our west of our life pod and there's one of those leviathans in the water. Oh god, turning my back to that thing seriously gave me shivers. Um shit. Well, I don't want to go any more in that direction if he's over there. But maybe I just have to. Wow, this gets deep here. Well, I guess we were almost at the surface. So... Whoa. Hello? He was like right fucking there. What are you guys? I think we've seen like the tip of this biome before, but I never went into it. There's something there on the left. Hey, are we okay? You guys are really pretty. They don't seem aggressive. <laughs> A jelly ray. The biomass in this area is dominated by plant life. Picking up faint Altera vehicle signatures. Altera vehicle signature. She wanted me to do a self scan too. But maybe it was just when I was over in that one section. Well, this is kind of cool. As long as that big boy that was, uh, southwest of us stays southwest of us. Faint Altera vehicle signatures. If it's faint, that means it would be a bit further away from me, right? Let me see, uh, what kind of stuff we can get out of rocks here. Oh, silver! I actually needed that! Oh, a big open area in the middle here. <gasps> Is that life pot? Life pot 13. They're probably going to send me here soon. I've had a radio message waiting. So I'm not going to interact with that yet. Ooh, you're new. And you move around like one of those sand sharks. Are you a shark? Whoa. Okay. Uh, I'm a little off course here. Gonna head back home. And then maybe check in front of um, where the Aurora was crashing. Actually, we're kind of getting back to a red grass area here. Oh, here we go. Crash site. Big one. And I don't think we've been to this one yet. We can cut our way in too. A lot of stuff in the area. Nice. Ooh, this one has just a door. Where am I? Oh, shit, there's another crash there. And even more stuff back here. Nice. Oh, God, I thought he was swimming right at me. Holy fuck. 
Uh, I don't have my second tank, but I do have my rebreather on. Get back! Ooh, and we're greeted with another door. Anything good in here? This looks like a power cell charger. Oh, battery. Another one? You make sure our inventory doesn't fill up with titanium. It's so easy to do. I have so much titanium, dude. Oh, shit. Anything actually in here? I didn't bring my flashlight. Um, let's really quickly cut through this door with our laser cutter. What do we have here? Another battery charger fragment. Another battery charger fragment. A modification station. Oh yeah, I still haven't built one of those. Battery charger fragment. Supply case with water inside. 30 seconds. Roger. Anything in here? No, that's a dead end. Okay, back in the Seamoth. Uh, my inventory is totally full. So, we are 780 meters away from the ship. Let me get my bearings with the... Whoa, hey. Hey, big guy. Let me get my bearings with where the Aurora is. Oh, wow. Okay, this is not where I expected. Okay, we'll try to head back to this. Yeah, when I said I had a lot of titanium, uh, I meant it. <laughs> I want to say the scanner room. Scanner room was like a cylindrical. It was like a circle. And I'm gonna see any of that out here. Oh, never mind! Is that two out of three? Yes! Come on, one more piece, one more piece, one more piece. See my fragment. This looks like another sea moth. Anything inside? No, just debris and a biter. Nice, dude. Oh my god, that feels good. That is satisfying. I don't know if we... Like... Oh, yeah, he's a predator, okay. <laughs> is he still chasing? I don't even see him. A little biter. Fucking ran into you, bud. Get out of here. <laughs> and to make things even better, while I was coming back to base, my hard drive filled up. So hopefully I don't lose everything we did this episode. Hopefully it's okay. Uh, so the scanner room, I was hoping to put it right there. I don't know if that's super... Oh my god, can you please not damage my base? Or my Seamoth. I don't know if that's super possible, but uh, titanium, copper, gold, and table coral. I can get all that. That's really easy. So, will you just attach nice and easy, or are you going to be a little difficult today? Looks like it might be a little difficult today. Okay, I'm going to move everything from these lockers to this wall, and get rid of the bed, and then... Hopefully, we can connect the hallway here, I hope. Okay, it looks like uh, some of the wall-mounted stuff was actually getting in the way. Okay, great. So, scanner room is completed. Oh, and we have enough room for the, for the bio generator. 
a reliable power source is a critical step towards self-sufficiency. Consider keeping a photo journal of your achievements to motivate you in times of despair. <laughs> so do I just take the fruit off this tree? Oh, my inventory's full. Uh, fruit off the tree and then put it in here? Yes? Nice. And then this is the new scanner room. Oh, awesome. So if I'm like, I want to find Rex in the area, this thing will start scanning and hopefully give us a scanner room upgrades. I don't think I have anything to put in this. And then hopefully give us some direction to find some wreckages in the area. Oh, is that it? Interesting. So ideally, we probably, like, let's do something way more common. Let's do sandstone chunks. Is it really marking this in, in real time on the topographical data? Wait, there's a camera? I get a little drone? It's kind of neat. So it's searching for limestone chunks right now. If I were to go outside, would I be able to see them? I think this is where the cameras are, are yeah, their little station there. So can I only see what I'm scouting with the cameras? I thought it was gonna give us indicators, like on our HUD. I mean, I guess it is possible that there's just nothing around, but then this map says something very to the contrary. Oh yeah, limestone chunks. Interesting. Oh yeah, you can fucking see them everywhere. So if I'm ever in need of a particular resource, I can't, whoa, just set the room to scan for that resource. And then over here on the wall, the fabricator has a bunch of things we can craft. So a scanner room, HUD chip, streams data from the scanner room to the HUD. Oh, that's exactly what we need. That is exactly what we need. Uh, and there's a range upgrade. The only place I know where to get magnetites is off the back of those, um, big leviathans like the the peaceful ones the big boys that just kind of scurry around scanner room speed upgrade so some of this would be really easy to make and some of it is a little more complicated well i gotta find a new place to put my bed and a new place for the aquarium but things are really starting to come along here oh let me test this so i just have i want like a ton of fruit. See how much those produce? I thought this would be a great idea. And then we just ran out of power. This will be a great test. Power only. Power restored. Nice. So could I put a locker for just the lantern fruit? Does it matter if it's rotten, if it's just burning this stuff? I could like harvest everything here and then uh, plant new trees and get those harvesting. So we have just a super duper steady supply. Oh my God, it's hard to move around them. Super duper steady supply of energy all the time. I think that might be a good idea. Not bad food either. Pretty happy with that. Oh, look, we're at one power. It's just barely holding on. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually so funny. Uh, I'll try to get a few more of these solar panels created. They are a little resource intensive, but now that we can scan the area for these limestone deposits, uh, that may not even be a problem at all. That might be super duper easy. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Sorry if this episode felt a little weird. 
I've, I don't know. I'm feeling out of it today. Take care, guys. See you again soon. Bye.